Hi, this is Jeff Challen. In this screencast, I'm going to talk a little bit about what VirtualBox is and why it is so useful. In this lab, we're going to have you use VirtualBox to create what is called a virtual machine. That virtual machine will allow you to install Linux on your existing computer and experiment with a command line environment in a way that's both safe and extremely powerful. But what is VirtualBox and what is virtualization? So this is a little bit of a preview of a topic and a technology that is extremely important in the modern world of technology. Virtualization is a core component of what we refer to as cloud computing. It's the technology that allows companies like Amazon and Google and other cloud computing providers to take big physical machines that might have 64 or 128 processors, large amounts of RAM and disk space, and carve them up into small virtual servers that can be then used to run microservices, can be used to um, you know, do multi-tenancy where I have two different people that are paying for access to the same physical machine. So this is a really core technology in the world of cloud computing and the world of computer servers. But it's also a technology that's actually pretty useful on your desktop. So what virtualization allows me to do is to create this um, uh, concept known as a virtual machine. So a real machine like the Mac that I'm using right now has some number of processors. It has a certain amount of memory and disk space. A virtual machine, as its name might imply, is not an actual physical machine. It has to use the resources provided by a physical machine, but it allows me to create using those resources. So if I have four cores, for example, I can use one or two of those tours as part of a virtual machine that is completely isolated from the rest of the physical machine that it operates on. So this allows me to do some pretty cool things. So I've downloaded and installed VirtualBox, and I've actually had VirtualBox on my system for a while because I use it to do a variety of different things. So when you fire up VirtualBox, here's what you see. Over here, this is the list of the virtual machines that I've configured. Um, you can see, for example, this one is called Windows 10. It is running with the Windows 10 operating system. It has four, I've configured it to use four gigabytes of RAM. Um, in the next screencast, we'll walk through the process of creating a virtual machine. In this one, I just want to kind of show you how magical they can be. So previously, I've created this virtual machine and I've installed Windows 10 in it. So as you can probably tell, this machine is an Apple computer. It runs the Mac operating system. It does not run Windows. However, there are some times when I need to do some things that require Windows. For example, when I'm trying to do some prototyping of some of our MPs to make sure that they work on a Windows system. So in that case, I could do one of two things. I could buy another computer that ran Windows, but I don't want to do that. I like having one computer. I could also do something called dual booting, but that's a very 1990s technology that I don't suspect, I don't expect anybody to do. So with the dual booting, with a computer that uses dual booting, when I boot the computer, I can choose to boot into, for example, Mac or Linux or Windows or whatever. The problem with it is that once I've made that choice, I'm stuck there until I reboot the computer. Instead, what I've chosen to do is use virtualization. So let me show you how this works. I'm going to restore this Windows virtual machine. And check this out. So now what I have is inside a window that's just one of you know potentially several different windows um, on my, well, let me not do that. Let me just show you like this. OK, so I can make it smaller. So you can see that this is just running inside a window on my Mac. Um, I haven't rebooted my computer, but inside one of several windows, I am running Windows. So this is the Windows operating system installed inside this virtual machine. So if I go to the start menu here, I can see all the fun windows, you know, the fun chaos of the Windows start menu. I can launch Windows applications like Internet Explorer. Um, I can, I've installed Eclipse, so you can see here, again, I'm using this machine to do prototyping for um, MPs before we push them out to, to, to try to have some sense of whether they work on Windows or not. So here's one example. Now, the nice thing, one of the nice things about using desktop virtualization is that when I'm done with Windows, so let's say I've done whatever I need to do with Windows, I'm on a website that doesn't work except with Internet Explorer, still a few of those out there, or I need to do some work using a piece of software that only runs on Windows. When I'm done, all I have to do is close the window that Windows is running in. And what this is going to do with the virtual machine is essentially the equivalent of putting it to sleep. 
So you can see it's going to save the machine state. So it's saving all the contents of the, the virtual machine's memory to a file on disk. And once that's done, this machine will vanish and it's not taking up any of my computer's resources anymore. It does consume some disk space, but that's it. Um, so that's one example. Now, again, I'm running a Mac computer. Here's another example I installed previously. So this is actually a Linux virtual machine, similar to the one that we're going to have you install and use later in this assignment. So this is running something called Lubuntu. Um, and once I boot it up, I am presented with a Linux command line environment, or a Linux uh, GUI environment, and I can easily launch a command line interpreter. Now, one of the nice things about virtualization is the fact that the world inside my virtual machine is completely isolated from the world outside of my virtual machine. So if I, for example, go into my documents folder here and list the contents, there are no contents in my documents folder. But if I went outside of my virtual machine and went into my actual documents folder, there's stuff in here. This is where my Eclipse workspace is on my actual machine. So the file system that's being used by my virtual machine and the file system that's being used outside the virtual machine are totally different. So I can't actually access any of the files on my main computer inside the virtual machine. Now, at some level, this seems like a pain, right? Because I might want to share data. But when you're experimenting with Linux and learning how to use the command line, this is actually a great thing because nothing I do inside this machine can affect the computer that I'm running on. So I can make terrible mistakes. I can do horrible things that will essentially make this virtual machine completely unusable and will have no effect on the machine that I'm using outside. So for example, same thing here when I'm done, um, I can close this up. It does the same thing it did with Windows. It's a little faster. And now neither one of these virtual machines is consuming any uh, resources on my system. So virtualization is a technology I would really encourage you to explore. Um, it allows you to experiment with lots of different environments. You can find a lot of pre-built virtual machines out there on the internet that allow you to experiment with different operating systems, different pieces of software. Um, it's a really safe, fun, and very powerful way to explore various topics in computer science and also particularly to get yourself familiar with basic system administration tasks.